This video covers dry land training methods used by Norwegian skiers ranging in age from young skiers just starting to compete to recreational, masters, top level juniors and elite skiers. This videotape was filmed at a Norwegian national team summer training camp in northern Norway. The focus will be on Vegard Ulvang, Olympic medalist and 1990 overall World Cup champion. You'll also see short sequences of other top World Cup skiers. The script was written by the Norwegian Ski Federation and Olympic coach Torbjorn Carlsen. Torbjorn also narrates Vegard's comments. Vegard has captured medals in the 1988 Olympics and the last two World Championships. Vegard, what motivates you for dryland training? I really enjoy outdoor life and it's easy to combine this interest with cross-country ski training. In the summer, I go on long kayaking and hiking trips. In the fall, training is much more specific, but even then I take the time to relax with hunting and hiking. Vegard uses a large spectrum of both general and specific training activities. How important is dryland training? I've always liked to train a lot in the summer and fall. This training is very important since it builds the endurance and strength base for the winter. Workout time varies, but often reaches four to five hours a day. What motivates you? It's the challenge and satisfaction of pushing myself towards new heights, breaking new limits and maybe becoming the best. When did you start cross-country skiing? I'm from Kirkenes in northern Norway, where we have lots of snow, so it was natural for me to start at an early age. I've competed since I was 11 years old. And how did you do at that age? I've been lucky and my results have been quite good all along. I wasn't exactly a junior star, but I've been competitive at the top of my age groups since I was 14. Do you have any advice for young skiers? Yes, hang in there, even when you feel that progress is lacking and that you're far behind your competitors. Periods of little or no improvement make it tough. Remember that results don't come overnight, but over time because of gradually increasing your training volume and quality from year to year. At some point your training will give you results. What is the main focus of your dryland training? Roller skiing, running and ski walking in forest and mountain terrain dominates my training. Most training is done at a moderate pace, such that you should be able to carry on a conversation while training, with a heart rate about 40 to 70 beats below max. At my level the runs can be pretty long, up to 3 or 4 hours. For younger skiers up to 2 hours is enough. A good amount of running is done on trails or natural terrain. This adds a coordination factor as well as increased strength benefits for leg muscles. Ski walking as shown here, involves ski-specific motions used during distance workouts and for interval training. Land on the heel, imitate ski-specific arm motions by pretending that you're diagonal skiing. Kick and stretch the kick leg in one motion and keep the center of gravity forward. Remember to slightly bend your upper body forward. High intensity training on foot is common for interval training, with ski walking and running mostly used.
How much hard training are you doing, Vegard? I do intervals about twice a week in the fall and use intervals of one minute and up. Some of them are quite long, up to 10 minutes. For young skiers, up to three minutes intervals is probably sufficient. Both systematic and natural interval methods are used. The heart rate is kept 10 to 35 beats below max. Active recovery is recommended, which means you should slow down in between intervals, but don't stop. This allows for the most efficient lactate removal from the muscles. Usually, the recovery time is the same length as the interval time. Make sure that your efforts are hard and controlled but not so hard that the pace slows down because of major lactate accumulation. Some interval workouts should also be done at a more comfortable anaerobic threshold type level, where you only touch the bottom level of your racing effort. Interval training should consist of a good mixture of ski walking, running, bounding, and roller skiing, and in the winter, skiing. Hillbounding with poles builds speed and explosive strength. Use 5 to 10 reps of 30 to 60 seconds. Land on the heel, stretch the kick leg, and use the arms actively. This method is used mostly in the fall, but not too often. Women and young juniors often do hill bounding as separate workouts because of their relatively shorter race distances, while senior men usually combine hill bounding with longer, easier intervals. Here we see 1988 Olympic medalist Mikkels Blas as he demonstrates excellent hill bounding. Mikkels Blas is one of the fastest classic uphill skiers in the world. Notice how he stretches the kick leg while keeping his center of gravity nicely over the foot during the kick. Great technique. Hill bounding without poles is another good exercise for building speed and explosive strength. 5 to 10 reps for 5 to 15 seconds two times per week is commonly used at all levels. Maximum effort during kicks is again stressed, and long 1 to 2 minute recovery periods between each set is preferred, since this allows for sufficient recovery. This training is done when you're ready for maximum efforts usually right after the warm-up, before intervals or strength training. Here we see 1991 15K Freestyle World Champion Dali as he performs skatebounding. This is another speed and explosive strength type of exercise. Skatebounding 
is an excellent exercise for skiers that feel they have okay average speed, but have trouble accelerating through steeper uphills and transitions. Pure speed training is also practiced at all levels in both flats and hills. Maximum effort is used since max speed will never improve unless you try to go beyond your own limitations. Speed training can be done up to two times per week depending on individual needs. Four to ten reps for five to fifteen seconds is most common and can be done on foot, roller skis and skis. From foot training, we'll now move over to roller skiing. Almost half of dryland training is on roller skis. Tell us about your roller skiing, Vagard. At this time of year, I roller ski three to four days a week and train evenly for classic and skating. I always stress good technique, so both the muscles and circulation are stimulated properly. Best results are achieved if all techniques and all training methods are performed on roller skis, including distance training, intervals, speed, specific strength, time trials, skating, and classic skiing. Safety is of utmost importance when roller skiing. Don't take chances. Stop if you don't feel safe. Take your skis off and walk difficult or technical downhills. Switch from skating to double pulling when cars are approaching in your lane. Use a bike helmet and protective padding for added safety. Roller skis for skating should have speeds similar to the speed found when skating in good winter conditions. Roller skis for classic skiing should have speeds similar to classic skiing. For detailed technique tips and recommendations, refer to Nordic Equipment's videos, Classic Ski Technique with Ovar Bro and World Cup 88. Both were produced in cooperation with the Norwegian Ski Federation and are highly efficient tools for anyone wanting to improve their race results or coaching knowledge. For more efficient pulling, use poles with carbide tips. Sharpen them often with a diamond whetstone to reduce slipping to a minimum. Slow the pace in uphills during distance workouts. Distance training should make you tired from the length of the workout, not from the intensity. Let there be a clear difference between distance and interval training. If not, your distance training will be too hard and your intervals will lack efficiency because you're too tired to do them correctly. Whether you're an upcoming young skier or ambitious master, remember that good results come when you pay attention to the details. Plan your training and work more on your weak sides than your strong ones. If you're physically weak, don't skip strength and roller ski workouts. And if you're slow, 
do your speed training. This will eventually pay off and add fun to your training and racing. Speed training on roller skis is mostly performed as double pulling using 5 to 10 reps for 10 to 20 seconds. 1 to 2 minute recovery between reps is recommended. As on foot, do speed early in the workout and always use max efforts in this type of training. Strength training is another small but important part of the total training picture. Roughly 5 to 10 percent of the total training is devoted to this. How often do you do strength training? I do strength three to four times per week all year except during the most important part of the racing season. I focus on endurance strength using simple exercises and 20 to 100 repetitions per set. Some of the exercises are performed at competition frequency and others with slow controlled motions. This training not only improves racing speed but is also an important part of the overall injury prevention program. Strength and speed activities practiced during the dry land season are for negotiating and having fun in tough hills like this. Stretching is mandatory after each workout. 
Use easy motions, stretch, hold for 10 to 30 seconds, relax, then repeat. Some final advice, Vegard? High training volumes are necessary to become good, but be patient. Don't start out too hard with too much training. Increase your training gradually from year to year. If you like to be out in the forest and mountain terrain, you have the possibility of combining this with cross-country ski training. The summer training should be as varied as possible, with a gradual increase in intensity and specificity. Hiking, kayaking and fishing trips can easily be added to give necessary variation in training.